Hey everyone, Cadams Tech here. So in today's video, I wanted to go over what it's like to be a junior software engineer. But first, if you're new to my channel, my name is Christopher Adams. I am a senior full stack software engineer living in the Tampa Bay area. Um, my goal for this video is to provide you with some useful information. And if you feel that you've gotten any, please remember to like and subscribe, share it with anyone that you know is interested in learning development. But without further ado, Let's go on and get into it. So I remember the days of being a junior software engineer. I finally got that first job. And I'll tell you that it was really nerve wracking, right? It was really nerve wracking because I would get in my own head. I would think, man, I'm going to work with a lot of smart individuals. Am I going to be able to be up to par with them? Well, the thing that you have to know is this. Most all software engineers think that way. And if you don't think that way, then you're probably thinking the wrong way, right? You should be thinking that way. It is intimidating. These are normal things to think about. But the fact of the matter is this. If you are hired, then the person that hired you and the company that hired you knows that you're capable of doing the job, right? The team that interviewed you all of the individuals that interviewed you. They know you're capable of doing the job. It's good to put pressure on yourself because it'll push you, but don't put too much pressure on yourself to the point where you're overwhelmed, right? Don't do it to yourself. So another thing is having the feeling like you don't know enough, right? Well, you're a junior. You aren't expected to know it all. You aren't expected to be an expert in any skill, right? That's one of your main objectives to do when you're there is to learn, absorb things like a sponge, absorb things from the mid-level people, from the senior level people, and even other juniors that you may be working with that are more skilled in certain areas than you, right? Absorb it like a sponge. Show them that you're eager to learn. Show them that you're continuing to grow as a junior, right? And try and get into that next stage of becoming a mid-level developer mid-level software engineer. Now, whether you're front-end, back-end, full-stack, these goals are going to be slightly different. But the point is to continue to evolve, continue to advance. Try to learn something new every single day, even if it's just a small, small thing. You can do it. Something that I found really helpful when I was a junior is getting feedback from people that you work with. Say, hey, I want to try and contribute in the best way that I can. What are some things that I can learn? What are some things that I can do to continue to grow and to continue to prove to you that I am very serious about being a software engineer? What's something that I can do to get to the next level? What's something that I can do to get to mid-level? Um, and just work towards those goals. It's very important to set some goals and try and work towards them. But always remember at the end of the day, you're a junior, you're not expected to know it all. Don't put that pressure on yourself. So one common thing is this, right? You're stuck. You're stuck on something. Don't be scared to ask for help. When you're a junior, you're expected to ask for help, right? You're inexperienced. Something that might take a more senior level person an hour or two might take you a day or two. It might take you a few days. Don't be ashamed of it. Don't be scared to ask for help though. This is a time where you, need, you should be asking a lot of questions. You should be trying to collect a lot of information. There's many different ways to go about a certain thing, right? And just because you're stuck on something doesn't mean you're incapable. So always remember that. Another thing, as a junior, you're not really expected to um, solve other people's problems. I mean, if you can, great, definitely do so. As a junior, one of the best things you can do is tune out distractions. Focus on learning. Focus on building your skills. Don't focus too much on checking news. Don't focus too much on doing other things outside of um, your job during the workday. Don't focus on text messages. Don't focus on browsing the internet. Don't focus on playing video games. Focus on building your skills because this stuff will accumulate. It'll accumulate and it'll accumulate. When you become mid, you get promoted to mid. When you become senior, you be, you know, all of these skills build up that you're learning. So you don't want to be a 
have junior level skill and get promoted to becoming a senior because you chose to mess around browsing on the web or playing video games. You want to build those skills. If, you, if you're one of those types of people that solve something really quick and then you build that feature really quick, don't take it as an opportunity to kick back and relax for the rest of the day because you got something done quicker. You should move on to the next thing. You know, maybe take a, a little bit of a break, maybe like an hour break or something, but move on to the next thing. Don't waste a bunch of time. That's one of my biggest tips for you as a junior level developer. Another thing is, as a junior, you want to make sure to m network. Go to meetups. Make friends with people that you work with that are developers. And, and in general, right? You want to have a mentor. You want to have people that you can talk to about maybe any struggles that you're having. Maybe anything that is going well you want to talk to them about, right? Maybe you have some knowledge to share with them that you've learned since becoming a junior that will help other juniors. Um, take these as opportunities to stand out, right? Take these as opportunities. Um, it can be very, very intimidating being a junior, and I know how it felt. I know how it felt, but you can push through it. You can get to that next level of becoming a mid-level developer. So for me personally, it took me, I started off working as a programmer um, for one company, and then after that, I got hired as a junior developer officially for another company. So I worked as a programmer for one year. And then I worked as a officially a junior level software engineer is what my title was for another company for one year. And then I was promoted to mid-level. So I was really happy that going from a junior to mid, it took around one year. Um, that's when I started to break in and actually become a real software engineer. Um, other people, it might take longer. It might take two years. It might take three years. Um, but really, you just want to try and do everything you can to try and get to that next level as a, as a software engineer. So when you start off as a junior, you want to try and keep pushing those skills, keep pushing your knowledge, show people that you're growing, right? And then you'll get to that next level. I know when I was a junior, I was certainly concerned about, hmm, when will I stop being a junior? When am I going to be mid-level? And for me, since I've had the title of, quote, junior software engineer, it took me around one year. Another thing that could be helpful as a junior software engineer, if you feel... If you feel the need, it's to step outside of your comfort zone and try and do some lunch and learns. Try and show and share with your team some things that you've been learning. This will definitely help you stand out. This will definitely show your hunger, right? If you're trying to get to that next level. So say you're a junior software engineer just starting at a company. Try and learn some stuff outside of work too and during work, things that you've been taught. And then once you've learned these things, try and share it with others that you think may be interested. And this will really help set you apart. So I started this video off with what it's like being a junior software engineer, but really getting in my own head, when I was a junior software engineer, I would constantly think to myself, what can I do to get to the next level? What can I do to become a mid-level software engineer? Which is why I'm making some of these um, different points based on that, based on what you can do to get to the next level. So another thing I would say is make sure to be very communicative, right? So if you use Slack, a lot of companies use Slack. Some people, I think, use Teams. They use different chat-based uh, applications in order to respond to each other. Make sure you, you're on top of it. Make sure that you respond in a timely manner. Same for emails. And this, this is irrelevant to what um, level and skill level you are. It's always good to show um, the willingness to reply and to get back to people because then people think you're engaged. You're really there to um, be a part of the team, right? So try and do your best to do that. So another thing, as a junior software engineer, you're going to feel some fear and some anxiety. You might get assigned a project, actually you will definitely get assigned many projects that you think are over your head, right? This is good because this is pushing your growth. And when you get through these projects, that means that you're going to be better than when you started them. You would have learned many new things. So don't let that get to you. Take it on as a challenge. Try and stay calm and deliver. If you need to reach out for help, reach out for help. Reaching out for help is not a sign of admitting defeat. Reaching out for help is a way to get over that hurdle. Don't spend too long being stuck on a single thing. But don't ask, but you kind of want to have a balance too. Don't ask too many questions. Try and at least do this. Please, 
at least do this. Try and spend a little bit of time figuring it out for yourself. At least try to figure it out, right? If you can't, then reach out for help. But don't, right the second you get stuck, don't say, oh, I'm going to reach out for help immediately within the first five minutes. I would say give it, depending on what it is, give it at least 30 minutes. Um, if it's something a little harder, give it, give it even a few hours. But definitely don't get stuck for several days on one single thing before reaching out for help, especially as a junior. Especially as a junior. So my point there is to try and have a balance. Don't reach out for help every five minutes every single time you're stuck on something. But don't wait too long either, right? So over time, you'll figure this out. And even me, as a senior level software engineer today, I reach out for help. There's times where I'm stuck. Like right now, for instance, I'm learning the Go programming language and I'm writing some tests in the Go programming language. Well, I'm finding in particular that writing tests in Go is, is rather difficult for me. So here and there, I'll reach out to help to other senior level folks on my team and say, hey, can you help me out with this test? I spent more time than I like to admit trying to figure it out. And when I say more time, I like to admit it's probably a few hours. Um, sometimes I'll stay up later and work on it. Sometimes I'll wake up really early, like five or 6 a.m. to try and like, okay, maybe I can knock this out before work. And if in that, in that case, I'm still stuck. If I wake up early and I'm still trying to figure it out and it doesn't happen for me, I'll reach out for help. So there's no shame in that. That doesn't mean you're a failure. So set your pride aside, reach out for help. So another thing I think is really important for junior level um, software engineers to do, and this goes for any level, is to show your eagerness, show your hunger, show that you really are passionate about what you do and that you want to learn, that you want to evolve and that you want to grow as a software engineer. This is very, very, very important. If there's one tip that you can take from this video, take that. Show your eagerness, show your passion, and show that you want to grow as a software engineer. And do this with the intent behind it. Make sure you're doing this from a place that you really do mean it. And I guarantee you, you're going to get to the next level very, very quickly. So that's it for this video. More videos to come. Thank you all so much. Remember to like and subscribe. I have more content that I'm working on editing and getting out here very, very soon. Till next time.